Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today we are going to be doing two recipes from Ashley Christensen and Caitlin Golan's uh, It's Always Freezer Season because the first recipe is one that you can either freeze immediately and then do something with later or make the second recipe and freeze it baked. So we're going to be making today in this recipe, patashu. We've made this before. Um, we've made a couple of different different gougere recipes which start with, ooh, excuse me, which start with patashu. And so we're not gonna show you all of the stuff at the, at the stove because we've done that before, but it's a little bit different because I'm pretty sure all the other recipes start with just water and butter, whereas this one starts with whole milk and butter. So we have our milk already measured out. We're gonna go ahead and pour this in here with our butter, which because it's milk, instead of leaving it uh, whole, I kind of cut it up into pieces just to, just so it will melt a little bit faster because I don't want to burn the milk. So we've got that. We also have our flour measured out here. Um, and that's, I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, but so to this, we need to add salt. So we have a uh, fine ground sea salt. It does call for, she uses sea salt in a lot of her recipes and this is fine ground and it will be a little bit different if you use kosher salt, The depending on the, the size of your kosher salt. Um, Depending on the size of your kosher salt, you may need a little bit more um, by volume, but we're, we're, we just use this, the salt. So we use this um, fine ground sea salt. <clears throat> and so what we're gonna do before we come back over here and show you everything, we're going to put this on medium heat bring it to a boil. So it's gonna be a relatively slow boil at medium heat. It's gonna take a little while to get to, to that because especially since the milk and the butter are both cold. Um, and then we're going to add the flour all at once and stir with our wooden spoon uh, until it comes together in a ball. Uh, and we're gonna stir it over medium heat for three to five minutes until until it's basically a really smooth texture and it's all a ball and it's pulling away from the side of the pan. We've done that before on some of the other recipes. I will definitely link them above and you can sort of see how that looks while we're doing it, but it's not super difficult, honestly. Um, so we're not gonna show you that right here just cause moving things around kind of sucks. So I'm gonna take my flour my salt and butter and milk and we're gonna go over to the stove and I'll show you what this is like when we're all done. Okay, so I don't, I didn't cook mine that much longer after I put the flour in, but this is what it looks like and I'm calling it done. It really does come away from the pan very easily. Now we're gonna put this in our stand mixer. Just all of it. And we have eggs at room temperature. So it says to do this on low speed. So I'm gonna give this a little second to kinda of cool off a little bit before I start adding eggs to it. But that's not in the recipe, that's just, you know, me trying not to curdle eggs. We've had a hard time with some of these eggs um, with shells, getting shells in the eggs, which is not common for me. So I'm definitely gonna um, break these into a small ramekin before I put them in. So we're gonna get each egg fully incorporated before we add another one and scrape down the sides as we, as neat necessary, so. I think right now we are mostly okay. I'm 
going to uh, go ahead and scrape down the sides after that second egg went in just to make sure we've got everything and keep adding my eggs. I'm going to just scrape the sides one more time and then beat it for a little bit, but she says the final dough should be sticky and shiny, which I think we have pretty much accomplished. Okay, so this is it for the pata shoe. This is ready for whatever you want to use it for. Um, and she says, if you want to make this ahead of time, you put this in a zip top bag and freeze it in that bag. And you can use that bag like a piping bag um, after you defrost it, just pipe it out of that bag for things like eclairs or whatever. We are going to add some more stuff to this in just a second, but, um, so we are not gonna freeze it at this point, but you can. And I'm sure it would be absolutely great because uh, one of the good things about this dough is that it's it's already cooked. So um, it's basic, you're freezing basically a cooked dough uh, since we cooked it on the, sto on the stove. Um, the, the flour has been hydrated and all of that. So stay tuned and we'll tell you what we thought of this pate choux because it is a little bit different than the ones that we've made previously. And we'll show you what we made with it. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make pata choux from uh, Ashley Christensen and Caitlin Golan's It's Always Freezer Season. And we didn't freeze it as just the dough. In fact, we pretty much immediately made the three cheese gougere, which you will see probably next week. Um, and we can freeze that product as well as freezing the dough. So that's, um, that's an option you have with this recipe. You can just, freeze it as the dough or make something and freeze it with that. And let me, oh, there we go. So there's also a way to make patashu donuts in here, uh, banana cream profiteroles, which are, um, you know, a, a sweet dessert. Uh, so like a cream puff, but with bananas. So uh, I, I have those whole shoe nuts. I've, I watched them make those on the Great British Baking Show and I would love to try them. So I might have to do that too. But the I really enjoy making pata choux because it's relatively easy. It's a lot easier to me than it looks a lot easier than like pie dough or anything like that. Um, I don't have a problem with cakes, although it's really easy to get a dry cake. Um, but pate choux is just one of those things that I've never messed up. I'm sure it's absolutely possible to mess it up, but it's actually really easy to get it right as well. And it doesn't require a lot of ingredients and there's no, since there's no leavening except for the eggs, I have never had a problem with it. Um, I did, when we baked the gougere, a couple of them were a little bit underbaked, probably because of um, consistency issues, consistency in size, uh, but, they were still delicious and they weren't so underbaked that it was a health hazard uh, for eating raw eggs. So we don't care about that here in this house. Uh, as long as they taste good, we're, we're fine with that. So um, I think this dough was a little bit differently different than the other ones that I've made because I'm fairly certain the other ones have included water, whereas this one was just milk. I don't remember if they included any dairy in them. I don't have to go back and check, which I haven't done yet. Um, but I know that they mostly started with water and butter and this one was just milk and butter. So um, they, they definitely are very rich, um, a very rich end product, which I'm fine with. I like that. Um, but let me know if you've tried any of our Gougere recipes that we've made here. And uh, if you enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up 
hit the subscribe button and come back and watch me make something else next week.